Hello, my name is Jason Butts. I'm a Lieutenant Paramedic, Castle Rock Fire and Rescue Department. This is my partner, Joe Dell. He's an engineer paramedic with Castle Rock Fire and Rescue Department. Today we're going to be talking to you about chest pain assessment in uh, a patient experiencing chest pain. Uh, the first and most important thing that Joe's going to do uh, to, before he starts examining his patient is make sure that he has appropriate BSI or body substance isolation. Uh, today he's wearing gloves and goggles. Uh, the next thing he's going to do is do an initial uh, quick assessment of his patient. He wants to check the patient's airway, breathing, and circulation, or his ABCs. At this time, Joe has determined the, the patient doesn't require any immediate interventions, and the patient has uh, explained to Joe that he is experiencing some chest discomfort. Since he is experiencing the chest discomfort, Joe is going to place the patient on oxygen. He's going to use a non-rebreather mask uh, with high flow O2. The next thing that Joe's going to do is start a secondary assessment on this patient. Uh, if you have multiple providers, this um, assessment can be performed simultaneously as you're treating the patient as well. The first thing Joe's going to do is uh, obtain a history of this event. Uh, he may use the mnemonic OPQRST to obtain information on the patient's uh, condition at this time. Next thing Joe's going to do is obtain some vital signs. He'll start with a blood pressure. He's going to place the blood pressure cuff on the patient's arm and then he'll be able to monitor through his uh, monitoring device the patient's blood pressure. Um, next, he'll check the patient's pulse. And while he's there, he'll also assess the patient's skin. So he'll be looking for the, at the patient's skin color, um, feeling the patient's temperature of his skin and also hit the moisture of uh, the patient's skin. Next, Joe's going to hook the patient up to uh, SpO2 or pulse oximetry and monitor that. And then Joe will also assess lung sounds and obtain uh, respiratory uh, status of this patient. With the initial vital signs uh, taken, Joe will determine what the patient's uh, cardiac rhythm is by acquiring a four lead or a limb lead ECG. Joe's gonna use the cardiac monitor to perform this. He's going to use the patient's limbs and place the ECG patches on the patient's upper extremities and then also place the ECG patches on the patient's lower extremities. At this point, Joe will refer to his cardiac monitor and determine if the patient, if he suspects that the patient may be having a myocardial infarction. And if that is the case, Joe will obtain a 12 lead to help him further diagnose and treat his patient uh, from this point. Um, the next thing that Joe's going to do is obtain a, uh, a medical history from the patient. And to do this, he may use the uh, mnemonic sample to provide him that information. We'll continue in our secondary assessment. And to do that, Joe's going to uh, start from the head of the patient and work his way down. The first thing he's gonna do is look at the head and neck and assess for things like JVD or jugular vein distension. Um, the next thing that Joe's gonna do is come down and expose the chest. Uh, with this, Joe can check symmetry of the chest. He can reassess lung sounds. He can uh, do a good palpation of the chest and feel for any or visualize any trauma that he may note. Uh, one other thing that Joe will be looking for at this point is a uh, pacemaker and or if the patient may have any medical alert uh, necklace on as well. Um, next, Joe's gonna work down to the abdomen. On the abdomen, he's gonna palpate. He'll be assessing for tenderness or any masses or pulsations that he might feel. Um, from there, Joe will move to the extremities. And on the extremities, Joe's looking for uh, pulses, uh, motor, uh, sensory, capillary refill. And then on the lower extremities, uh, Joe will also be looking for uh, pedal edema um, that may be present in uh, a chest pain patient. Um, from this point, uh, Joe will be able to consider the possible causes of this patient's uh, problem that he's having today. And 
he will be able to start his treatment. Now at any time during your assessment of the patient, if there's a treatment that you feel is necessary, you may start that treatment. Um, just follow your local protocol to do that. Uh, one other thing we want to consider is early transport of these patients uh, to get them to a hospital and to get them to get their treatment started. Um, and then once we've determined that we're either working with this patient on scene or we're taking them in the ambulance to the hospital, we want to perform continuous reassessment of the patient. That will include ABCs, um, monitoring of the patient's vital signs, and also continuous monitoring of the cardiac monitor and any 12 leads that uh, may be needed to be obtained uh, on the patient. And that concludes our session on chest pain assessment.